So that equation is the equation that we will be using uh, because it refers to when fluid flows in a pipe, you have heat as well, transferring. So in this case, the sketch that I gave you is when heat is transferring in, but in our case, heat is transferring out right? because the ambient is cooler. So the hot air is flowing in a pipe. So we'll be using this set of equations, the one that's highlighted in green. So I'm going to write that set of equations now. That's Q equal to M dot CD and the change in the temperature. So M L minus D and not. So that will be equal to the mass flow rate that's given to us, 0 0.05. And the interpolated value for your specific capacity is 1011. I'm using all these numbers from here. Okay? So if you use Holman textbook, you might get a little bit different number. Uh, but they are both correct. Multiply by the temperature difference, that's 85. I think this one should be I. Minus 103. So do the calculation, you get to minus 9101. Now this minus here, what it means is that the uh, heat is transferring uh, because we take uh, the end point minus the initial point. Right. So your end point actually would have uh, at, will be at a uh, lower temperature, and your initial point will be at a higher temperature. So that means heat is lost. Right. That's why there's a minus sign over there. So that's the one for part one. For part two, part two I'm gonna do a sketch. So the sketch is for that pipe. So I have the pipe and this is the internal part of the pipe. And this is kind of like a round uh, circular pipe. So this Actually, assume that this one has negligible dot wall thermal resistance. So, uh, because there's flow that's going on inside the pipe. And there's flow also going on on the outside of the pipe. So what that means is that there's going to be thermal, uh, your velocity not related. And because of that flow, you have your convection heat transfer coefficient. Right? So inside here is force convection. So that will be Hi. And then Hi is actually written as Hx at L. That's your internal heat transfer coefficient. For the external heat transfer coefficient, that's H0. So heat is transferring out radially. Transferring out radially. And on the outside is what we call the natural convection. So for whatever kind of convection, you would have your boundary layer. So I'm indicating the boundary layer by the dotted line. So this is your boundary layer. That one as well. So now I want you to use the knowledge that you have from conduction. In your conduction, when we have a convection that's um, going on from the inside to the outside, we can sketch the thermal resistance for that. And the thermal resistance 
I'm going to sketch. Uh, there will be two thermal resistances, one for the inside heat transfer coefficient, and the other one is for the outside heat transfer coefficient. So the inside temperature, Pm, right? And that surface is, um, with have, uh, which has a negligible dark wall thermal resistance. Uh, because it's negligible, so we don't have a thermal resistance to come in between. So we have that surface temperature of the wall that's uh, written as Ps. And then as it exit, as a heat exit over at the outside of the pipe, it would have a temperature that's T infinity. That's the ambient temperature out there. So over here is T infinity. Over here, the temperature of the wall that's T and at the position L. So we're considering this position as L. And this part of the temperature over here, we consider that as RT and inlet. So the um, thermal resistance for convection is 1 over H, and in this case for the internal one, that's Hx, that's Hx at L, and the thermal resistance for uh, the one that's outside is 1 over H naught. And the current that's going through there, the so-called current that's actually your heat transfer uh, rate. But, uh, this one will be our heat flux that's going in there. That's over at L. So this is setup. And what I'm going to do is to solve it using this setup, this thermal circuit over here. So your QS double prime at L will be equal to TML minus T infinity. Divide by 1 over the entire thermal resistance, HXL, plus 1 over H0. So we could go ahead and uh, solve that later, but uh, I'm going to leave this as what it is, because this is one of the uh, questions that was asked. We want to find out what is the heat flux. So before that, uh, I need to find out a few other things, especially what would be my Hx value. So I'm up to find out what is that. So in order to find it out, what I'm going to do is to try to solve it uh, this side. So over here, I'm going to solve what is the Reynolds number. Uh, in order to determine is it in the turbulent or is it in the laminar flow. So Reynolds number, as what we know, is given by rho velocity multiplied by diameter over rho viscosity. This is the Reynolds number that we're familiar with. But unfortunately, not all these parameters are given in the question. So I need to modify this Reynolds number a little bit. How do I modify that? What I'm going to do is multiply pi d at the numerator and pi d at the denominator. And that will give me rho um pi d squared over pi d mu. To simplify it further, what I'm going to do is to multiply by 4 and divide by 4 over here. Pi d mu. Why do I do that? That's because this part over here is actually uh, the error of the pipe. So that one is actually equal to the cross-sectional error AC of the pipe. So if I have rho um AC, that's actually my mass flow rate. Right? So this part over here is equal to the mass flow rate. So finally I get this following form, 
because mass flow rate is the one that's given to me. So in the question, that's the one that's given. So I'm going to make use of that to find out what's the Reynolds number. So I have 4 multiplied by 0 0.05, divide by pi and diameter 0 0.15, and then my viscosity. I interpolated that as 211.7 times 10 to the power minus 7. Okay. Solve that, 20500. Now this is definitely larger than 10,000, where 10,000 is the one that decides it's going to be the turbulent flow region. So, since it's in turbulent flow region, and there's a few other checkers, I need to check L divided by D. So that's 5 meters divided by 0 0.15. That's actually equal to 0 0.33. Sorry. That is 3.3. So that is definitely greater than 10. That means, yes. Is still relevant to us that it is this Reynolds number is indeed in the turbulent region. So, hence, is reasonable. Therefore, it is reasonable to assume it is fully developed. So uh, since the problem is a cooling problem, so it's cooling is a cooling configuration. What that means, your n will be equal to zero point three, and you can see where I'm getting at already. I'm getting at this Newton number expression. N U D that's equal to H X L C divided by K and this one must be equal to my turbulent equation. So this this was uh, provided to you just now in the slides before for this angle number zero point three. Right, that's for the turbulent. Uh, fully developed turbulent flow. So I have Reynolds number and a Prandtl number from my interpolated results. So I'm going to write it down. Two, three, Reynolds number, two, zero, five, zero, zero, to the power of four fifth. And Prandtl number interpolated one would be 0 0.693 to the power of 0 0.3. And I could uh, do a bit of adjustments to this uh, because eventually I need to find out what is my HXL, what is my convection heat transfer coefficient. That will be equal to the Newton number multiplied by K over D. So that Newton number results is this whole result over here. And that one is actually 56.4. So taking 56.4, multiply by thermal conductivity, divide by the diameter, and that will be equal to 11.5 watts per meter squared Kelvin. So that's the heat transfer coefficient at the point L. Okay. Now, that gives us that leads us back to this part over here. So that part, we're trying to find out what is the heat flux. So I'm going to substitute it in. That will be 
EML, EML is at 85 degrees Celsius, minus T infinity, so that is at 0 degrees Celsius, divide by my um, thermal resistance, that's 1 over 11.5, plus the other one is given in the question as H0 is equal to 6. So now I'm able to solve that, my heat flux would be 335 watts per meter squared element. So if you look back at the network, the uh, thermal resistance network, this one over here, what I've done is to solve what is the current that's going through it. Right? That's 335. And I'm also interested to find out what is this temperature over here? I have this temperature, I have this temperature, I have this thermal resistance, this thermal resistance. In order to find out what is this temperature over here, what I need to do is to develop a set of equations that's meant for this part only. This part only. So I have current, I have this temperature difference, I have thermal resistance. So my Q as double prime. L, that will be equal to TML minus TSL divided by only this thermal resistance over here. Only this thermal resistance is 1 over HX. So I have the rest of it already. This is 85. TSL, that is 85 minus TSL. 1 over this Hx is 11.5. So I can solve for my TSL. That will give me 55.9 degrees Celsius. So that's the final answer. This one is the final answer. So what we have seen so far is all meant for circular cross-section. So there are other non-circular types um, heat transfer that's going on as well. And this table over here outlines all the various different shapes. Uh, you have them in different aspect ratios. So if your printout is too small, like eight slides in one page, you get the same paper and you can't read because all the points will be so small. So uh, please print it in the size that you could see it. But uh, I just want to highlight there is this aspect ratio, A, B, G. Um, when you have the aspect ratio, we're taking B divided by A in the following table over here. All right. So in cases when it's non-circular cross-section, again, 